What is the point of blue eyes? Why do some people have blue eyes? Why did this trait evolve? A new preprint to a study in England may have the answers. Find out today on Survivor Jive. Blue eyes are frequently a topic of discussion. Historically, people have found them quite attractive. I think that's generally true. But these days, they've also been the subject of a popular meme, which um, implies that blue eyes are sort of creepy or intimidating in some way, because they have a kind of piercing effect, as though they look directly into your soul. Today, blue eyes are found all over Europe, and also in places where European people have migrated, such as America and Australia. But they're most common in northeastern Europe, around the Baltic Sea, in countries like Finland, Sweden, Lithuania, Estonia. In some regions of that part of the world, up to 80% of people have blue eyes. But in the United States, only about 33% of the white population have blue eyes, and this percentage has been decreasing. Globally speaking, blue eyes are very rare, and that's not surprising when you consider that it's a recessive trait. Uh, generally limited to Europeans. Why do blue eyes exist? Well, let's start with where blue eyes come from. Back in 2008, there was a study from Denmark, and the scientists determined that they thought it was likely that all blue-eyed people had a common ancestor, either one person or a single population, and they speculated that that person or population would have lived in the Neolithic around the Black Sea. People often repeat this, uh, referring to that study. But in fact, since 2008, genetic science has come a long way and we've got lots and lots and lots of ancient samples and the, the way that they sample ancient skeletons has become much more efficient and accurate. And now we know that there, were, there are loads and loads of much older blue-eyed samples, skeletons which have the DNA associated with blue eyes in Europe back in the Stone Age. In fact, the Stone Age, the, the Middle Stone Age, which is called the Mesolithic, the Western part of Europe had a population that geneticists refer to as Western hunter-gatherers, and pretty much every single skeleton they found from that period in that region has blue eyes. So it was like the entire population from Spain uh, to Sweden and parts of Greece, all of Western Europe, like Britain, Ireland, everyone had blue eyes. And that was way before the Neolithic. So it's very likely that blue eyes existed long before these Western hunter-gatherers did, but they don't seem to have been a very common trait in the Ice Age before the Mesolithic. I've seen some people on the internet speculate that blue eyes were an adaptation for a frozen, frosty, snowy environment, uh, and they claim that blue eyes helped to reduce glare from the light off of the snow or ice, and that this would be advantageous for hunters in the Ice Age. But this doesn't really make any sense because uh, what we see in the uh, genetic archaeological record is that blue eyes became common after the uh, last glacial maximum, after all the snow and the glaciers and everything and the ice age started melting. And if you look at modern populations that live in the Arctic Circle, you know, Inuit and uh, Siberian people in northern Russia, and they all have brown eyes. So it doesn't seem like a necessary prerequisite for efficient hunting in icy conditions that you have blue eyes. And in fact, you know, Greek people uh, often have blue eyes, and Greece is uh, not a not a very frozen Arctic environment at all. Uh, so I don't think that theory makes any sense at all. However, a new study from Liverpool John Moores University may have some answers to these questions about the origin and purpose of blue eyes. The paper's not out yet, but the preprint puts forward a plausible reason for why blue eyes were selected for in Europe. They tested 40 individuals with a simple eye test in increasing luminance to examine if there was a difference in capacity to see in low light conditions between blue-eyed and brown-eyed individuals after a brief adaptation period. Adapting to the light, that is, you know, after it's changed. Blue-eyed individuals were identified to have significantly better ability to see in lower lighting after a short adaptation period than brown-eyed individuals, making it likely depigmented irises provide an adaptive advantage. 
superior ability to see in low light conditions could be the result of increased stray light in depigmented irises, which in light luminance is disadvantageous, but in low light conditions may provide an advantage. So the conclusion from that quite small study or the preprint of it is that brown eyes could be better for seeing in brighter conditions, whereas blue eyes are better in low light conditions. In other words, blue eyed people can see better in the dark. Is that creepy? Does that creep you out? Are you afraid of blue eyed people with their nocturnal vision? So Ice Age Europeans hunted larger game than Mesolithic Europeans did. There were more megafauna in the Ice Age. And they hunted them across snowy conditions um, where we can imagine that despite the cold weather, the ice and snow created a lot of glare. Uh, and so perhaps that's why blue eyes were less needed in the Ice Age. Uh, the warmer conditions of the Mesolithic may have resulted in an environment with less light. A little bit speculative, but even though it was warmer, there could have been less light for hunting conditions. I noticed that here. I've lived in England and Sweden. Sweden has much colder winters than Britain uh, in terms of temperature. and But because of the snow, it feels brighter. That's my experience. Another possible explanation is to do with the fact that during dusk and dawn, in that twilight period of low lighting, uh, when the sun's coming up or going down, there's a lot of animal activity. Birds become active. Either they sing their morning songs or they're looking to roost. Animals are doing similar things. They're all extremely busy in that period. And that makes it quite a good time to go hunting. Uh, and I imagine that Mesolithic hunter-gatherers made use of the twilight periods for hunting. And also some animals have reduced ability to see in those conditions. So that would be an easier time to ambush them. So it might be that the focus on hunting during these twilight periods uh, resulted in very, very strong selection pressures uh, at the end of the Ice Age in European populations of hunter-gatherers to the extent that within a few thousand years, on the entire population of Western Europe was blue-eyed. It would have to be extremely strong selection pressure. And it, that explanation doesn't quite seem to en encapsulate it because surely not everyone had the exact same strategy of hunting in, in the twilight conditions. But I can't really think of any other reason why they'd have this huge selective sweep to get rid of brown eyes when uh, brown eyes have been generally the, the dominant and selected for phenotype for all human populations globally. Uh, in, in any kind of condition, whether frozen or tropical. So it's quite a strange thing, really, that the whole of Western Europe became blue-eyed after the Ice Age. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think it might have something to do hunting in low light or maybe hunting in forests, because one of the things that happened after the ice melted is that uh, tree, the tree line went much further north. So m that was a period where much of the broadleaf forests of Europe started to appear. Uh, previously, there'd been a lot more pine forests, uh, and maybe these hunting in these dark, big forests was also some uh, a sort of environment that meant it was uh, adaptive to have uh, better vision in low light when you're trying to hunt small game uh, beneath the, the foliage. But besides this huge sweep in the Mesolithic, there's another thing we have to explain, which is that uh, after the Mesolithic, Europe experienced two massive population shifts the result of two, the migrations of two new races into Europe, both of which were brown-eyed. The first came uh, in the Neolithic and brought farming to Europe, and they came from the Near East, from Anatolia. And the second came at the end of the sort of the Neolithic, uh, at the junction of the Bronze Age, and uh, they dominated Europe in the Metal Age. And they came from Eastern Europe, sort of from around Ukraine. And uh, they were also predominantly brown-eyed. So you would expect to see the result being that the population, the Mesolithic population that was largely replaced mean that Europe became brown-eyed, but that's not what happened. Instead, both of these populations at separate periods, so over a thousand years apart from each other, when they entered Europe, uh, mixed with uh, the previous inhabitants to some extent, but selected for blue eyes, so that both of these incoming populations became blue-eyed. Now that is a, a quite difficult thing to explain because it's a recessive trait 
but for, it might not have the same explanation. These people weren't hunter-gatherers anymore. They did hunt. It, of course, hunting has been part of European diet as late as medieval times. It's made a substantial part of a diet. But at this stage, they've got uh, you know farming, different types, agriculture and pastoralism. So they don't depend on very strongly for like selection pressures, environmental selection pressures for being able to hunt in low light. There's just not that kind of selection pressure there. And yet these two populations both became more blue-eyed over time during the Bronze Age and the Neolithic. Now, that's quite strange, isn't it? This is in sharp contrast to what we see in modern history with European populations with uh, certain amounts of blue eyes, such as people from Britain and Scandinavia, uh, moving into non-European parts of the world, such as North America and South Africa. Now, the, the white populations of North America and South Africa have been getting progressively less blue-eyed and more brown-eyed over time. And that's not entirely due to the mixing with other non-blue-eyed non, non races, because it's the same with, it's the case with the white populations I'm talking about. So why is it that in the modern period, blue-eyed populations leaving Europe tend to become less blue-eyed, whereas in the prehistoric period, brown-eyed populations entering Europe became more blue-eyed. It certainly isn't the case that you would expect brown-eyed populations moving into Europe now to become blue-eyed. Uh, there isn't any selection pressure to, to encourage that at all. And it is, as I said before, a recessive trait. My explanation, which is purely speculative, please understand, is that if the environmental pressures that were uh, at play in the Mesolithic, causing an increase in blue eyes in European people, w weren't in place anymore during the Neolithic and Bronze Age, then an alternative explanation could be that rather than natural selection, it was a sexual selection uh, at work. So that the phenotype of blue eyes was associated with status or was considered more sexually attractive by these uh, Neolithic and Bronze Age populations to the extent that the phenotype was not only preserved, but increased in frequency among the incoming populations uh, and, and reaching levels of up to 80% in parts of Europe today. Uh, that would that would be one explanation. I think that's more likely than that the, the pre-existing uh, selective pressures for being able to hunt and see in low light were still in place so late on. But, you know, some people maybe did some farming in the dark. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it was still selective for, to being able to farm in the dark. But I mean, for it to have that big an effect, everyone would need to be farming in the dark. So I don't know. Uh, that doesn't sound as plausible to me. It, it, it seems more likely to do with uh, sexual selection. And there are plenty of people today who find blue eyes very attractive. Please be aware, this is just an educated guess. And also, the new preprint for the paper from Liverpool that I've mentioned only had a study size of 40 people, which isn't very big. And this is just a preprint, so it hasn't gone through peer review yet. Uh, but I think it's very interesting, and it's the most plausible explanation so far for the emergence of this trait in Europeans. I think we'll have to wait to get a conclusive answer on why blue eyes rose in the Mesolithic and why it then rose among these incoming populations in the Neolithic and Bronze Age. But this is certainly a step towards answering these big questions people have about blue eyes. What do you think of blue eyes? Do you find them creepy? Do you find them intimidating? Or do you think that they're sexy? Let me know in the comments. And by the way, this channel can only continue to exist because of the generous donations from my patrons who support this channel. That's what makes it exist. If you want this channel to continue to exist and you enjoy my content, then please click the links in the description to support me either on Patreon or on Subscribestar. And if you do that, you'll get access to loads of exclusive content and an opportunity to speak to me personally in the voice chat sessions I do. I really appreciate everyone who supports this channel. It's the only reason it carries on going. Thanks for watching. Survive the Jive. See you next time.